Hi everyone, so today I want to talk to you all about a little bit of a more sensitive topic and that's the issue of uh, isolation that comes along with hearing loss and also bullying that comes along with hearing loss. So I've been hard of hearing since I was very, very young, uh, possibly since birth, but it was discovered when I was about three years old. I was in a uh, heart program for hard of hearing children in preschool for my last year of preschool. <clears throat> and then I went to a regular public school, what they call mainstreamed, uh, starting from kindergarten. And then I was mainstreamed for the rest of my uh, school education. And I didn't really know any other kids who had hearing loss. There was no one in my school that I was aware of that had hearing loss. And I grew up, I'm going to date myself here a little bit, but I grew up in the 80s. Um, so we, the personal listening devices that they had, um, as they call the oldies, the assistive listen, listening devices, were very big, very clunky and very obvious. You had like a battery pack that was probably about that big that hooked onto the waist um, and then a loop around the neck. So everybody saw it. Um, it's not like today. Now they have, you have hearing aids and then you have a little piece that can attach to the hearing aids so you can have a direct connection with the teacher's voice or whoever is speaking. And it's not really that obvious. But when I was in, in school, um, in the late 80s, early 90s, this is what I had to deal with and very obvious and it did set me up for being bullied because I was seen as different from the other kids. And I was the only kid that was going out in the middle of the class to get speech therapy. So I experienced bullying uh, throughout elementary school when I was homeschooled for a period of time. but. I was also bullied by the church kids, and a lot of it was deliberately directed towards my hearing loss. Some of it was not, some of it was just, you know, the idea of being that, like the outcast and the kid that didn't fit in. But a lot of it was deliberately directed towards my hearing loss. And as a result, I ended up going back to public school and high school, and I hid my hearing loss. I chose not to do the IEP uh, program, I chose, you know, I wore my hair down or kind of covered it a little bit so I could cover my, hear my hearing aids when I was wearing them. And I tried to kind of blend into the background as much as possible. And it wasn't until I reached my 30, early, mid 30s, early 30s, uh, that I discovered hearing loss support groups online. And there was a lot of things that once I re reached that community, I realized that, okay, things that I thought were personality quirks of mine or just me being an introvert were actually very common and related to my hearing loss. So the idea of listening fatigue and getting mentally exhausted and needing to be in a quiet space, um, you know, the struggles with speech and, and some other things you know, were mostly related to my hearing loss rather than just being introverted or being a little bit different. And the depression that I struggled with is also very common with people who are in the hearing loss community. And there's something that I noticed though. Uh, a lot of people in these hearing loss uh, support groups in these communities, uh, when they're posting, the thing that they're holding on to, the thing that hurts the most, is that they're saying, I was a kid and I was alone. I was a kid and I was bullied because of my hearing loss. So these are people that are not necessarily part of the deaf community, because the deaf community has their own support structure, but people that were mainstreamed, um, whether they didn't really, you know, they were hard of hearing, so they didn't really Quali you know, I don't want to say the word qualify, but you know, they weren't seen as needing the sign language support, or if 
the parents were encouraged to give them oral education instead of sign language. A lot of them grew up not knowing anyone else who had hearing loss and feeling very isolated, feeling very alone, and oftentimes feeling bullied and wanting to hide themselves or hide their hearing loss. So if you're a person right now, uh, understand that words matter. If you're listening to this right now and that maybe you've been bullied, uh, you can understand the struggles that so many of us are, are going through and the hurt that last uh, long into our adulthood. Because the people writing about this, a lot of times they were in the 50s, 60s, even 70s. So I'm trying not to squint here. <laughs> uh, the sun's bright. But they're still carrying around that hurt from things that happened decades ago when they were, you know, a little kid of you know, six or seven or eight or nine or when they were a teenager. So just know that if you are struggling, uh, know your worth, know your value, um, know that your hearing loss doesn't define you and it shouldn't limit you as a person. And if you are someone that has unfortunately made fun of people because of their hearing loss or because of a disability, or it really could be anything. You know, people pick on others for all sorts of reasons from disabilities to race, you know, to just not having the ideal look, you know, the hair, weight, whatever. Um, understand that the words that you use can affect someone uh, for the rest of their life and make an effort to be kind. That is really what I'm going to say. Uh, compassion doesn't cost us anything, especially now. Um, this world needs a lot a lot of compassion. A lot of people are going through a very difficult thing. And we can make an effort to be kind and to understand that what we say to someone may affect them for the rest of their life. That, you know, you've spit it out and you go on your day and you're not thinking anything of it, but they're going to take that and carry that wound inside of their heart for years, maybe even the last the rest of their life. So just understand that we all need compassion and it doesn't cost us anything to give it. So let's make an effort to be compassionate. And if you are someone that's feeling alone for any reason, uh, that you're struggling with bullying or isolation or feeling left out for any reason, know that you're not alone. Uh, there are so many other people who are going through similar things, maybe not the exact same situation that you're going through, but they're going through other things and they feel like the outcast. And, you know, be willing, even though you're feeling alone and you're feeling hurt and isolated, be willing to reach out to others. And as you do, you'll find that people are willing to reach out to you and that you can grow community from that. So there was just something that was on my heart I uh, hope it was beneficial to you, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.